magic can't wait. All right, everybody. As it takes some time for for YouTube to to realize that I'm streaming again, getting you notified of the time you guys need to actually, you know, click on the thumbnail in order to to, to be part of the show. All the time it takes, you know. Get a deck of cards out, everybody. And get out of Road Road to Car Magic because we're getting started here in a minute. Duanya, Azizi says hi, hi, Duanya. We're getting started here in a second, everybody. Mario's magic. Like and subscribe. Well, hey there, everybody. My name is Odd Mario's, and welcome back to another Card Magic Live Jam session here on my channel. And today is a special day. Today is the first time or the first episode of a new series, live streaming series here. We're going to undertake a journey we're going to go through walk through the royal road to card magic chapter by chapter on this channel now every tuesday here about eight uh, eight o'clock p.m gmt plus two berlin german summertime i'm happy everybody's tuning in let's see what's going on in the chat i got um 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 iwi wow i'm catching you live it's been a while how are you doing thanks for asking iwi I'm pretty fine. The summer has arrived in Berlin finally. We had a beautiful day. I had a, a very relaxed day and I'm super excited to um, to get started with you guys um, with the first chapter of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Believe it or not, um, I have not been um, been with the book. I have not been reading a lot lately, actually. But of course, to prepare myself a little bit I read the first chapter now, right, just about right now, like an hour ago or something. And because I haven't been reading a lot lately, my brain was completely, you know, blown away. I could just could feel my synapses firing at me like crazy. It's like, what are you doing? You're reading again. This is crazy. And uh, yes, it just proven once again, again, how, how important it is to read, actually, to train um, this, I don't know, brain areas that get involved, basically all the brain, I wonder. And how important is also for learning magic. And uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit, uh, maybe more in depth later when we when we actually get started here. More and more folks, if you sh shuffling in, how you doing? Yokoman uh, 0581 is in the house. Hey Yokoman, what's up? Let's get to work, right? Uh, Evie, awesome new project, right? So um, I have uh, the music a little bit too loud on my headphones here for actually. Um, uh, how I say it, for actually doing something. So I gotta turn it down. Flying we, I'm late, I guess. No, you're not flying we. I, I just got started today a little later. So, what's going on here? Everything's fine, sound is fine. We are good. Now, first of all, uh, when I when I read now the first chapter, um, I realized how rich this book is. There are so many things in between, between the lines, or so many tips on the way when they uh, when the authors um, Hugard and Broé, Jean Hugard and Frédéric Broé, by the way, it was published in '51, I believe, or '52. Was it '50 or '54? Even first published. Um, Originally published in Cleveland, World Publish, 1951. 1951. So it's an old book with some old, fine, classic tricks. And um, w when we will uh, continue our journey here on uh, on the Royal Road to God Magic, we will find that a lot of, of of modern or newer material kind of you know evolved from from stuff that's in the book and um of course what's in the book is even older so this is kind of an anchor place you know like in a, some some um some give some orientation in 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 a, in a space-time continuum we are dealing with when we are learning or studying card magic so it's it's a great source and um i'm super excited about it 
Now the second thing I realized about um, working with this book that they that the authors are pretty organized with it. So what we got us- usually we got um, some kind of a little int- introduction what the chapter is about, and then uh, we have a section of specific techniques card handling techniques and then we have a section of tricks and of course the tricks are um designed in a way so that the techniques you learn in the chapter come to use um so there are use cases of these techniques but the great thing about it and we're going to we're going to realize this now in uh, right there from the first chapter who got in Broé, they, they use very, very clever methods and they, they are very um, great authors in, in the way of um, putting or, or, or mixing different elements so that from the very beginning we learn as students of card magic um, how, how to, to blend different elements, to, to, uh, to meld different elements together in order to create great effects but even more in order to, to um, perform. Um, well, to become great and outstanding entertaining performers because that is the main goal, at least for the authors of the Royal Road to Card Magic, to um, entertain your audience. That's the, that's the main objective here. Yeah, I'm glad too I started a session of Royal Road to Card Magic because, um, believe it or not, <clears throat> Probably this is going to be very rich for me too. And, uh, not only that, um, getting back to some material you, um, you left behind, uh, or uh, I left behind already a while ago, will be very interesting probably to, to just renew it, to refresh it, uh, maybe to, to um, find something new in it. And then also, of course, uh, th- there are gaps. I, I just didn't, uh, you know, I, I just didn't follow the, the tip here of the authors. I didn't. I didn't go through it step by step and and there are some gaps and maybe I'm, I'm filling these gaps here doing this and you guys of course um, are free to ask me anything anytime um, about the chapter we're working with um, of course um, because th- that that's what this is all about you know I, I reckon you guys got the book I, I guys uh, I, I, I reckon you guys are working with the book and studying with the book so so we we have a a common ground here that's the idea at least and then we see how deep we go and how far we can uh, go and then we will um, we'll we'll go into a little, little practice session so chapter number one the overhand shuffle right the overhand shuffle so I have a whole tutorial series on the overhand shuffle up and running on my channel. You will find this on my channel page. Um, and I didn't link this now. I have other links in the info cards. But uh, I, I, if you are looking for a decent in-depth tutorial on the overhand sh- shuffle, you will find this on my channel. Just say, because... The overhand shuffle is such an important, such a fundamental technique, which is explained here in the introduction of the chapter very much in detail, so that the authors really spend a great deal of time explaining the right um, uh, position uh, of the cards, the right um, position of the hands, and then the, the proper execution of the shuffle which is the foundation of all the false shuffles you can do with the overhand shuffle. and. This, of course, is uh, the preparatory work you need in order for pretty much everything that comes afterwards. Because shuffling a deck of cards is something very natural and this is uh, kind of expected from a decent perform- performance of card magic. Because we are assuming that we are performing for people that are not uh, completely dumb. Okay, We are performing for people that have a certain... Um, uh, knowledge in life that have a certain um, IQ, a certain intelligence, and a certain interest, of course. And if we do something without shuffling the cards, uh, this will um, this will lay people off v- uh, very easily, you know. Because whatever you perform, it's obviously then something that has been set up or that has been arranged uh, before you got started and uh, you will never shake this um, suspicion off without a proper execution of any kind of shuffle. So the overhand shuffle is the deal, is the thing we are starting with. 
Of course, there are many other shuffling techniques, but today we're going to focus on the overhand shuffle. And before, now I don't have any music on my headphones. Why is that? I just don't know. I don't know what's happened, happened here. So um, I, I, I got to go back here on this page and I just push play all. And I got music back on my headphones and hopefully you got music back a little bit in the background. If it's too loud, let me know guys. So just very shortly, I've got this here so that, that, that I can really show you uh, what's going on. The right position of the deck in the hand is absolutely essential. It looks something like this. Um, you, you, you catch the cards in a, in a very open and loose hand, kind of in a diagonal so that the outer um, left edge kind of, you know, ends here at the joint, at the first joint of the index finger and the inner left edge corner here, sorry, kind of rests in the in the center of the palm. Something like this, this is how this grip looks like. And you can see here that um, that I can, in this grip, I can position the pinky pretty much here at the at the end of the, um, of the cards, at the inner short side, right? So, and I'm not bullshitting you, this is the proper grip. Let me show you this here. This is how, how it's drawn in the book, okay? Can you see that? Let me show you. This is how it's drawn in the book. Okay. And then the right hand holds the cards um, in a 45 degrees angle, horizontal to the floor. Mainly clip between second finger and thumb. The third finger comes to support and the fourth finger closes here so that this looks good and the index rests on top of the, of the long side. Something like this, this is how it looks like. Bring this together and we're in this notion here. This is this is the grip. And also um, Erdnes, the expert of the card table, um, talks about this and says very clearly uh, that this is the absolute necessary grip for a proper execution of the shuffle. Everything else is, is not getting you anywhere. So if you don't want to take it from Hugat and Bruet or from Otmarios or from everybody else who knows a deal about the art form. Take it from um, Erdnes, right? <laughs> is that enough authority for you to believe? Believe this is uh, important? By the way, what I really like about this is when you study card magic and uh, you um, you get to more so sophisticated techniques, you will realize, you will find that everything is based on a proper handling of the proper basic grips of the cards. And this is the greatest mistake since this is the first chapter and since we're getting started and since I know a lot of um, hobbyists and a lot of beginners and a lot of just, you know, um, orthodox like you guys. Um, and these are all not negative terms, okay? They, they just say that you're just um, um, not, um, uh, that you're just uh, in for, for the fun or that, that, that there are, might be different motivations you got. But anyways, the greatest mistake you can do is that, um, that you do not, uh, do not start right from scratch. And then the more advanced the stuff gets, <laughs> the more you get lost and the harder it, it, it gets actually to, to, uh, to achieve anything, really. Um, you see this very often. And then um, you have these, uh, these situations where people try to perform s some, some sophisticated uh, um, sleight of hand based card magic and it's all just a mess uh, because uh, the player has never learned to shuffle cards in the first place properly. And here's the deal, and we're gonna find this out we're gonna, when we go deeper into this uh, first chapter. Basically, all you need is the open shuffle and then maybe some other shuffle and um, some false cuts, <laughs> some basic flourishes. That's all the material you need to create extreme, beautiful and entertaining card magic. And here's another thing, uh, while I'm at it, Sorry guys, that I'm go I'm going back here from the mechanics here. And while I'm at it, when I um, walk through the tricks here of this chapter, and there's some beautiful tricks in here. We're going to talk about this in a, wh in a in a short while. When I when I read this, I realized how different the time were when these authors of the book, when the authors of the book would be performing. They do trust the audience so much more than I would trust an audience today. <laughs> which I thought was crazy. 
And they really do work with the social interaction between the audience and the performer. It's, it's a common theme that goes throughout the whole book. So, for, so really from the very start, when we are walking through the Royal Road to Card Magic, we are, um, we are um, our goal, or, or we are walking towards a very real, highly interactive social situation where we do communicate a lot with the people where where we do not present vi one visual effect after another we do tell stories and we do um create momentum and groove and flow and social interaction um this is really exciting so just that you keep that in mind and that is why the stuff which a lot of the uh, newer the, the the magicians of the younger or newer generation seem to mm, underestimate saying oh this is easy or um this is uh yeah this is not cool there's so much more advanced stuff out there today trust me man you gotta memorize things here and you and th when they say that you shuffle um you know um subconsciously or just not focusing on shuffling they are they mean it they mean that there is no focus on shuffling whatsoever so you are really with your audience and you're telling an engaging story or you're memorizing a pattern or something and while you do this you are controlling the cards while shuffling the cards so this stuff um, is compared to many this basic stuff is compared to many things easy at the beginning or to a certain level but really to put it to bring it to, to a cutting edge to 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 bring it to really to, to its max maximum potential in use case in real use case scenarios this also takes time and is really difficult and just to have said this this is not this is not kindergarten stuff we're starting here at a very basic fundamental level but it's still absolutely valuable and very very important just to have said that before um, we go on here and right now we got 14 people viewing welcome everybody to the channel my name is up marius and we're just getting started here walking through the royal road to card magic um very improvised this is completely just and improvised So Cabalet is also in the house, let's go. And when I first got Royal Road to first uh, and best tutorial I saw and it was yours. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad um, because this is another topic on uh, that the uh, YouTube algorithm is completely out of control. It's completely crazy. And um, channel like mine are really, really um, taking bad hits lately. Um, even bigger channel, educational channel, they are just suffering with not getting suggested, um, hard time, and smaller channels. M my channel right now is not even, it's not, it's, it's completely dec declining. It's just getting crushed. So I'm really excited about everybody. Guys, everybody tuning in right now, very welcome. I'm super happy you found it. I hope you have the time. Make sure to definitely hit the notification bell um, if you care to hit the subscriber button or if you already subscribed because the AI, the algorithm is super weird lately and it's not suggesting. Chan I, I'm, I'm telling you this, guys. So I'm just, I'm, I'm losing my numbers. I in, I'm falling. I'm, I'm, I'm just crashing right now, okay? As a as a content creator on the platform just that you know this is going on it's something else so Kavalet I'm great that you watched the tutorial when you got the uh, first Royal Road to Card Magic that my tutorial uh, was uh, working with your needs um, and that you that you're here today that's amazing that is rocking amazing <laughs> against all odds and 1948 G Miller just ate a uh, t toffee crisp uh, yeah, I hope uh, it was nice. Whatever that is. It's uh, uh, I don't know uh, Okay, back to the card table and we got no signal here because I have to turn the camera on so um, The right handling right now then the next the next thing is uh, ne Very important is that the right hand is doing all the work So it's the right hand that moves up and down and the left hand is basically just moving the thumb right so and to, to shuffle then a a bunch of cards or so, um, several cards it is it is that the that the thumb contacts here the cards at the um long side at the outer edge of the long side see that and then you can just you know 
get them cards going. And it's really important that the right hand is doing all the work. And now, in order, so that's the first thing, okay? You gotta spring that on speed. Yeah, that's the first thing. And now, we want to shuffle single cards also, right? And the only difference here is that the position of the thumb changes. You see now the thumb is just contacting the the back of the card here. And then it's the the right hand that again does, does all the work, you know? There you go. And in this manner now I can, and it's what we call, run the deck. It's just single cards, one card just goes down. And then the next goal is to be able to control this absolutely. So single cards, a bunch of cards, single cards, a bunch of cards, single cards, a bunch of cards. And then the first use case scenario here, they extract it's um, controlling the top card, right? And um, this looks uh, in performance speed something like this. I'm starting with the, with the card face up, right? It would look something like this. Opala, and then something like this. So we control the card. Let me do this a little faster here. I was dropping the cards. So I shuffle the first card just to the bottom and then I just bring it up again. That's what I do. T control of the of the of the top card. And of course you can also shuffle the top card in the same manner. Um, second from the bottom. So got, I got three of clubs here at the bottom and if I now milk the three of clubs at the bottom so that when I just shuffle, look, I shuffle them cards up and I just carry the card away, bang, here I go. Now I've got the, the, the three of hearts second from the bottom. Shuffle rest on top of there and now I can shuffle the three of hearts back again in the same manner I just did before, milking the bottom card shuffling some cards and then running the last cards bringing the three of hearts to the top in this manner of course you can control um several four queens four kings four aces whatever first thing royal road to card magic and here again and i'm repeating myself once again because i know you guys are watching me because you really want to learn card magic it's it's step by step master the, the principle the basic principles the fundamental technique and then everything follows right so shuffle single cards packages and then you can start controlling the cards maybe first you, you practice to to milk the bottom card right to do this a couple of times and then you can practice the first first control Controlling the top card. Then, just that I'm showing you what just in the book. Here, check to check this out. That's how that's how they how, how these beautiful drawings look like. Railroad to card magic. So the run is the next thing. I already explained the run. Um, and then the other and the undercut, which is um, based on the in jog. I already talked uh, talked about um, in jog jogging and uh, jogging techniques um, on my tutorial series on the um, basics of um, card control, no limits of control. Also, this tutorial series is it's older, uh, but it's still uh, rich. It's there. It's out of my channel. If you want to learn the basics with um, in-depth tutorials, the basics of card control, go to my channel page and you will find it there. So, um, very interesting here, let me, let me read something from the Royal Road to Card Magic. Here it says, the term is applied, the term in jog, to the uh, subterfuge of causing a card to project about one quarter of an inch from the inner end of the deck. It's one of the oldest uh, strateg uh, str oh God. stratagems, stratagems? Stratagems and magic? What is stratagems? What does that mean? I don't look this yet. Some old words. Uh, anyways, having been used, uh, having been in use for three and a half centuries, it, it was first mentioned in Scott's Discovery of Witchcraft, published in 1584, which is one of the early publications on on uh, magic as a performing art. 1580 freaking four. That's uh, 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 medieval times. In jogging cards. Um, of course, we're using here the in jog. Then this would look something like this: you jog a card. You jog a card in, inwards, like this. Look, there is, there is this 
Quarter of an inch, they say, the cut is in jogged. And you see now why the pinky is so relevant? Because you keep the whole sucker under control with this here, right? That's it. And now you shuffle the rest of the cards on top of there, right? And then the next thing is an undercut. What you do an undercut is you, you, you lift up now this in jog with your thumb, you come with your thumb, you bend the cut, and then you lift it up, and then you take the lower portion, you, lift, you take it away, and you throw it on top, which is, a, which is a shift or a pass. Basically, that's a pass. Now, the whole operation looks like this in performance speed. Let me try this, something like this. So I'm shuffling the cards, and then I'm throwing it on top. That's it. This controls the whole top stock, believe it or not. That's it. So um, let's 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 take the ki let's do this with the kings here because the the aces are so are so lame. Let's let's take the kings here, um, <coughs> alternating in colors. Bad. I hope I don't lose them now. So I'm shuffling the cards just like a crazy person, even losing one, throwing them on top. Doesn't matter. Let me do this once in performance speed. There you go. One, two, three, four cards on top. Is it the kings? It's the kings. It is the kings. Nice. Isn't that nice? In jock, undercut. Also, this takes some time of practice. Here's a little subtlety for you guys when I, when I use the undercut. This is how I would roll because this is something here you don't... Um, you, this is something... Of course, we are bringing attention to the cards because we are learning this. But when you do this for in a performance situation, there is no attention on the cards whatsoever. The shuffling just happens along the ride. So still, I um, still I control or navigate or man, uh, um, the at attention of the audience here a little bit. Or you can do this, but of course, you got to be natural all the time while you do this and very casual. Here's what I do. So um, I talk to the people when I injock the cards, then I bring my attention down to the cards while I shuffle them and they go with me down there. And when I do the, um, the throw, the undercut, shortly before that, I come up with my attention. So it would look something like this. And if you would be standing w in front of me, you would be looking at me now. Now you would be looking down with me while I'm shuffling the cards. Now you would be looking up again and I throw the cards up. Some people don't even see the cards been thrown. Basically, that is a pass. I'm doing a pass here. <laughs> Anyways, that is the shuffling technique, and it is absolutely powerful. Um, and I still got my kings on top of the deck. Look at this. Look at this. So we are in. We are in the Royal Road to Card Magic. First chapter. First techniques, and we already have th two, several card controls at hands just with the overhand shuffle. So here comes a variation and now of the of the of the if you don't want to throw the cards, this is how you can do do this too with the in jog. So you catch a break and then you shuffle the cards to the jog. And now I'm not sure, I believe I lost it. Let's see. I lost it. Yeah. I lost one king. No! No no. I just put a jack on the king. So once again. So I in jog the cards, I shuffle on top of there, and now I catch a break and then I shuffle to the break instead of, you know, undercutting the cards. Very nice, very powerful. Yeah? And of course, with the undercut and with the, with the shuffle, uh, now with the, not, what's it called? It's the undercut and then it's the... I'm not even sure. I don't even know right now. Anyways, so um, this is what you can do with the overhand shuffle. And of course, you can also always uh, control. Let's say we want to control the ace of spades with the kings. Let me show you how this looked like with these both techniques. So I'm now, yes, undercutting. And um, now I'm doing the same thing with, um, with the shuffle. That we go. Bang. Look at this. I got the ace of spades on the bottom of the deck. And I got my four kings. Bang. This is powerful. This is some powerful stuff. We don't, it's just the overhand shuffle. Just with the overhand shuffle. Just because you guys spent time of practicing how to shuffle this, how to how to perform a decent overhand shuffle. You get this at your hands. Of course, you got it um, 
spend some time practicing these forcing, sh force shuffling techniques. But with a with a solid overhand shuffle, you're done. So uh, thank you. Just answered an Anna's question on the in jog and undercut, which I had. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. No, said Raven. I have not heard from Motix. I tried to call him, and but and he, and there was uh, um, a connection, uh, but um, he was uh, gone. I I he so he's there, but um, I didn't talk to him. Um. Next thing. Next thing. Next thing. Next thing. Next thing is. A beautiful, um, what is it? Wait. Um, this is a this is a bottom stock. So let's it's now the now the kings are gone. Let's bring the aces to the bottom. So. So we um we got the aces at the bottom underneath. Underneath the, the jack of clubs, right? By the way, with the backhand fan, you can show a completely shuffled deck, yeah, with the aces hidden. Very well. And now you could bring them back to the top just from the first control and then back in the same position by shuffling the cards, yeah, just the way I explained it. There we go. You got the aces at the bottom of the deck. But here's another way to control the bottom. It's very beautiful. It looks something like this. Ah, oh, what is this? Okay, the seven of diamonds. One more time. Let me do this one more time. Shuffling the cards and shuffling the cards. That's something how it looks like, and we got the bottom controlled. That's really nice. Of course, you can use this as a top control with the aces on top of the deck now. Shuffling face up also. Yeah, there you go. Bang, 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 bang. Let me do this one more time. Run to challenge myself. Okay. Bang, 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 bang. Shuffling the cards. And there we are, the aces. That is also there. And this is... Um, is it the over and fold shuffle? Let me shake this. Where is this? Okay, I don't know where this is here in the book, but I got it from the Royal Road to Card Magic. All this is the material in the Royal Road to Card Magic. Yeah, very powerful card controls. So guys, do you want to do you want me to talk more about uh, the overhand shuffle and the techniques? Have you some uh, um, a specific uh, quest some questions on the on the on, on the overhand shuffle and everything let me know there's something happening in the chat um we have i don't know between um 10 and, and 18 people viewing all the time so 19 uh 1984 g miller is uh is befriended with the shade as magic how are you today i'm doing good i just did some food and now i'm in a wonderful mood it's uh you're not hungry that's great uh, thank you. you, just answered an honest question. I had this. Yes, it's clear now. I love the Orion Shuffle because most people can do something like it because of that familiarity. I think it works better than other kinds of shuffles in obscuring that, it's wor that it works a form of card control. Yes, it is, um, it is um, uh, true that um, people uh, tend to um, trust the familiar and if they, if they use the specific technique to mix the cards, um, uh, you, uh, they don't expect, and if they know, you know, especially how difficult it is, you know, to shuffle some cards. Um, so you shuffle the cards, you yeah, know, and um, how, and they know, and they're just excited how, how good you can do it because they know, they know it's very difficult. So I got already a, a, a mixed deck of cards and then I keep on shuffling the cards a little more, right? And I'm just totally with, with, with my audience and I'm shuffling the cards. And once I did this, and then I have the four aces on top of the deck, okay? It's, it blows their mind. They go, they don't know how it's possible. It's for them, it's magic itself, you know. But of course, we use these techniques only to perform even greater effects, even to um, to just to get a step ahead, you know, or, or a couple of steps ahead, or to um, prepare or rearrange the next effects 
during our set, during our routines. And that's the great thing about it. And the, and the overhand, shuttle, overhand shuffle is extremely, extremely helpful. So. Having said that, let me read this here. The real illusion of card magic begins with the conviction on the part of the spectator that his card is lost among the others. Without that conviction, the trick has already failed. You know, um, so to say, um, all we do now later on yeah, in card magic, we will um, we realize that it is to misguide the. Um, um, the, to, 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 to misguide the, con the concept, the conce conception of, of what is happening on the side of the spectator. And this starts on the basis is that when we shuffle the cards on the side of the spectator, that means that the cards are mixed or get mixed, or the spectator's card gets lost in the deck. On our side as a magician, it means that the cards get controlled, that the card get positioned where we want to have it. So it is pretty much the opposite of what is going on and from there now we can uh, um, we can we can have the spectator walk in any direction uh, with, with his mind where we want him or her to go it's like you know quick 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 putting some energy in there and then just let him then go and they go like uh, until they fall from the table because their minds are just completely blown away <laughs> Yes, I believe so. That it's in the second part of the of the um, uh, shuffle uh, of the overhand shuffle. It was the one I, I just performed. But we will get into there, and we can um, we can um, get this into put bring this up anytime we want. So we will find it. If it's if we if we if we if we are forgetting about it right now, it, do, it doesn't matter so much. So come on, but thank you so much for uh, following. So focus, that is great. That is great, guys. Are you ready to talk about the tricks? Do you want to get into the tricks? The tricks we we got in the first chapter of the Royal Road to Card Magic because these tricks are amazing. They are so cool. And um, <laughs> when I think about it, I wouldn't consider any of the, I don't consider any of these tricks as actually beginner tricks. <laughs> They all are quite challenging up to a certain point. Um, absolutely crazy. So, okay, let's let's go here. Let's go uh, with the. Let's go to the. Let's go here to the. Um, let's make the sharp pretty somewhere around here. Somewhere around here, and. Um, we are going with the tipsy turvy cards so we got whatever we got um full-blown a deck of cards and we have a spectator um we we have a spectator um select a card out of this deck any card will do the job right so um i it, i shouldn't be using this deck for this trick right now well, let me let me use another let me use another deck these uh bees are not working with this one here let me, let me, which deck I'm using. I can find a great deck that I want to be using. What about opening up, cracking up another deck of cards, guys? I treat myself with, I, oh yeah, let's do this. One second. I'm not only cracking up a deck of cards now, I'm cracking up a um, a whole brick here of tally hose. Yeah. Why? So this is a good example here why borderless cards are not suitable for magic all the time yeah so cellophane away and then where's my knife my knife 
dangly 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 so current 16 16 four people are watching and shark doesn't work yeah borderless stacks don't work you can see the turned over card that's right coverlet that's right coverlet which is pointless which ruins the effect now Oh, look at this. Brand new deck of cards. Oi, 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 oi. Tally hose. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Smelling? Mmm, that smells so good. <coughs> oh. Mmm, that's so perfect, perfect, perfect. Here we go. What do you think? What do you think about this Joker, guys? Do you like this Joker? Tally ho! <laughs> Beautiful. And that's the ace. And that's the back design. So Joker and back design. So let me show you this now. I got all these cards, right? And now I have a spectator selected card out of the stack. And I'm doing this with a thumb riffle here. This is there. And you say stop anytime. Stop right there. So you stop me now at the at the jack of clubs. But it doesn't really matter. Because this trick is not only about the jack of clubs. This is about all the cards. So I will now place them. And, I, and you shouldn't do this trick actually with a with a um <laughs> with a brand new deck. <laughs> uh, I'm going. This is not going to work. I got. <laughs> okay, got to do this differently. This is not going to work. Like that. Like that. One and a half. Face up, one half face down, right? And it doesn't matter how many times I turn them cards around. I always have about 50% of the cards face up and 50% of the cards face down, right? <laughs> but when I pull out one card from somewhere the center, from the lower portion here, the face up portion, and I will add a little magic to it, yeah? Just like that. See what's happening. All the cards reset themselves. Oh, magic! Really, every all them cards. There you go. That's the topsy turvy cards. By the way, I've got a whole tutorial series or a whole series on this trick up and running on my channel with a performance, super old performance, with a tutorial also on different reverse techniques to do this trick. And now, what has this to do with what has this to do? with the overhand shuffle probably nothing you can do this uh, this thing without shuffling the cards but i would argue what helps after um reversing the bottom card right after reversing the bottom card maybe you just give them cards a couple of shuffles like that and then you have a spectator select the card stop right there so you stop me now at the at the cards that the, the card that tells you the, the rules the rules of magic the rules of g gambling right and i place these cards face face up on the palm of my hand here on the table brand new deck won't behave now i take the other half and i place it right there bang ha! and then i just make the magic happen and all them cards are back into order <laughs> something like this you see so after the bottom card is reversed and you shuffle the cards with making the cards you with, with the spec you don't need to do that the spectator does not know what's coming what you're trying to pull off but I believe subconsciously this sells the illusion even better you know just one or two overhand shuffles in there throw it in there in between before this before you give the spectator the choice that would be the idea and what i'm seeing here is insane an extreme delay but it doesn't matter okay so i realized now this was a stupid idea to take a brand new deck taylor hue and trying to to get this done i remember i remember 
when I performed this as a uh, as a novice of card magic um, for as as a as a young student of magic and I and I was I had a st I had stage fright and I was nervous I would have pr problems to to place the to place the the cards on the back of my hand just like now without them dropping because they are so sloppy but now it's getting better and this, this uh, trick to to, pre to put pressure on the cards helps uh, also a lot here you know when, I, when you're nervous from card magic and you got a little bit shaky hands this is a risky maneuver and i think it's really mean that uh, that john who got and frederick ray put this at the first at, at, uh, here at the beginning it's the first trick you learn in the royal road to card magic <laughs> Beautiful trick. Do you guys have do you have experience with the trick? Do you have questions? Gotta break in my, my brand new telly who's here now. Which I don't do. I don't really break in cards. I just uh, use them, start using them immediately as you can see. Which isn't a good idea always. Yeah. So. There was something else. Right, so the Royal Road to Carbage is such a great book because when we start with the Topsy Turvy Cuts, the first trick in the book, it says it's always, that's the first sentence here. It's always a good rule to begin a series of card feeds with a short, startling effect on that will arouse the interest of the onlookers immediately and simu stimu stimulate their interest in the marvels to follow. Right, just this, these things. The, the Royal Road is full of, of really rich sentences like that, yeah? Yes, the turnover in the book. I have a whole tutorial up on, on this, uh, which is also something where it, where it comes really with misdirection. Because I believe they teach it in a book like this. You, sh that you, you show the spectators the cards with the, with the classic spread. And then you turn it around in this manner. And then you show it again from the bottom. You say all the cards are completely... All the cards are completely... Um, mixed already and now you're going to pick one out of the deck and then you do this motion and by doing so you would um, reverse the card at the bottom yeah um, I've got a complete uh, a very in-depth tutorial on this reverse with all the subtleties also with a, with a little a notion of misdirection you will find this in the info cards in the um, in a tutorial series or in the series on on, the, on this very tricks on the topsy-turvy card next trick you guys will also find in the on my channel there's also a link in the info cards wait, 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 wait. there it is um, that is a poker players picnic so we have been just we have been just controlling the aces with the overhand shuffle and obviously we use this here so let me give you a brief summary of, of my routine whenever I use this and I really like to use this. Um, I really like to like like these tricks to be simple to to have the audience to get the audience involved, you know, trying to make my life as simple as possible. Let me show you this trick here. So we got four aces on the top. Oh you know what? This is how I roll. I got them usually at the bottom underneath any a random card. Um so I come out and I say, guys, a deck of cards, check it out. And I shuffle the cards, fair and decently, just give them a proper shuffle. And then I would, um, I guess I would shuffle them one more time or, and cut them onto the table. That's what I would do. And I hope I got them. I don't know. I don't think so right now. Let me check this out. I lost them. Gotta do this again. 
Now I would be been the, the the masked magician. There they are, the suckers. I didn't catch the in jog. So that's the routine. Shuffling the cards to the top. Casually. Four aces on top of the deck. And then in jog. Catching a break with the jog. And then simple triple table cut. And then you proceed with the self-working card trick. The poker player's picnic where the cards get cut by the spectators. And then there's this dealing notion where three cards get dealt onto the table and one on each pack. And once again, in-depth tutorial up and running on my channel in case you can follow here because this is too fast. And just by the way, this is one of these tricks it builds up expectations. So if it doesn't work, people are going to be very sad. <laughs> just like that. And here you go. And it's just a five, but it should be another ace. Yes. And there you are. You are the ass at the table. But here's the thing. Don't you worry if this happens to you, you know. Yeah, don't you worry. Nobody's gonna die. And I guess I gotta practice catching an in jog again. There is the fourth ace. <laughs> so what didn't work? So four aces on top, catching an in jog, cutting the cards. One, two, three, four. Okay. One more time. You forgot the last pack? The, okay, so it wasn't a sleight of hand? <laughs> it was just me being stupid. Right? No, that was the, no, that was a sleight of hand mistake here. But I don't know what's ever why. What, I'm, what am I doing wrong here? One, two, three, four, and then I just come like this, and I just sh should be there. What am I doing wrong? One, two, three, four. And by the way, you see, when you practice, there's really this difference to practice this uh, this moment of truth. You know, the dirty work as one part of the bargain and then you got to practice also the whole routine of course or the whole trick if you want to get somewhere but maybe this is just uh, cooling some of you down if it doesn't work it nobody's gonna die it doesn't really matter you just you just failed in performing a card trick basically and the risk is worth it because if you succeed, you're going to perform a little miracle, right? So, poker player's picnic. Guys, I guess you know this trick, right? Do you know the other tricks in the book? Because I don't know them. The, there is another beautiful... I know them, but I never performed them, really. There is a beautiful um, card levitation... It's a pinky does it. Now, I don't know why they have this here in the first chapter with the, with the overhand shuffle, but it is a beautiful production. It is a beautiful production. Yes, they use the they use the um, they use the overhand shuffle control to bring the card to the top, then shuffle it to the bottom and back to the top. Hand the deck to a spectator to shuffle, then have him remove remove one card and hand the pack to you. Have him show the card to others as you turn away. So and then you 
After spectator, place the card in the deck and then you control it to the top of the deck. And then kind of, I believe you produce, you, 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 this, the, the production looks something like this, where you um, just lift the card, where you just lift the card with, with the power of your finger. Why doesn't this work now? Ah, wait, I forgot. I need to rub here a little bit, something like this. I need to rub like this. And then the card comes rising, very slowly comes rising right there on top of the deck. Oh, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> and then the card comes really out of the center of the pack. Check it out. Bing, bing, bing. There's the card. La, la, la. Something like this. I don't know. From this very angle. This beautiful, beautiful rising card trick with two hands called the pinky does it um, because the pinky does it in this case by the way um, right now I got a tutorial series up and running it's the late, la, la, latest tutorial series on my channel which you find on my channel page um, um, organized and where, where uh, all my tutorials are organized in playlists um, if you don't know this already it's on the best card productions and there I um, show a one-handed card production um, card rise rising effect with only one hand in that tutorial which is uh, pretty um, pretty close to this one here uh, maybe one day I will do an in-depth tutorial on the version here because this is something where you've got to work with angles a little bit um, to um, to get the to get the most out of it of, of of the visual effect here, but basically it is a visual production of the card of the selection that has been lost due to shuffling in the deck come rising out of the card something visual here at the very beginning of the book. The pinky does it. Very beautiful trick also. So um, I just showed you now something snappy at the beginning. The um, Topsy-turvy cards. Then the poker player picnic, a, a four ace production. And then we got a very visual card rising effect. Um, and two more tricks or three more two tricks we're gonna talk about in a minute. Before I do that, I just found here something else I wanna read to you guys. Um, and that says here um, at page 12 of the Royal Road to Card Magic, um, a good card trick, and by that we mean a card trick which entertains, surprises, amuses and puzzles an audience, has certain attributes. It has a simple plot. It must not be confusing to those who watch. That's the first attribute. The second one, the modus operandi is simple. So for yourself, the workings of it, it is simple. And then it is interesting. And four, it has a surprising denouement. What is that? What what is that? What is that word? I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I gotta go to my favorite English side. And I, I'm gonna show you this here. My favorite English side. Lingue. And that is called the, the word is called um Denouement. 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 That's a French word, I believe. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. We got that. We got. We got. We got that covered. And uh, de denouement. Uh, these are the four, four tricks. Yeah. Um, let's get back here. After a little um, drinky break, the Magic Corner is announced and says, "Hello, hello, Magic Corner. How are you doing?" I'm in the middle here of um, a walkthrough of the Royal Road to Card Magic. We, today is the first chapter. We're dealing here with the first chapter. And I'm already totally exhausted. I already totally bumped here with, uh, with the topsy-turvy cards. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. And um, also failed in the poker player's picnic. But yeah, it's, a, it's practice, right? It's a practice session and it's a, it's a lecture, you know? <laughs> poker players picnic. Also, Topsy Turvy Cards Poker Players Kick Picnic in, links in the info cards for in-depth material on this. Case tight well is in card terms. That word means uh, that the reveal is good. Yes, yes.
So and then we have another we have another revelation in combination with a uh, kind of uh, prediction um, and um, uh, uh, revelation at impossible location. We got a pocket discovery. And this is basically also using the overhand shuffle to control the selection. In this case, Ford from the top. So let's run here with the Joker. Joker standing here for the um, Joker is standing here for the um, selection. So we run it forward um, from the top by just shuffling one, two, three cards on top. We in jog and we throw our undercard, right? And then we got one, two, three, four cards and we got the Joker on top. So once again, you have a spectator selected card, it's the Joker. You shuffle the cards go anywhere. You have the spectator put the his or her card in there and then you shuffle and uh, you shuffle the other cards on top of there however you position it on the third card you know so we got one two three and then we in chalk and then we undercut bang and then in this trick we say look after shuffling the cards yeah to a random position after shuffling the cards to a random position it could be that um the um that your card is on top now so let's see this so we got uh one two three four cards it's not your card and we um we don't have it here at uh, uh at the bottom of the deck not even close to the bottom of the deck right this is how it would look like when you perform it then you take these cards you place them in there so the card is really lost in the deck this is what you do kind of you know and in this situation because in in this in this play in this trick we don't know the spectator's card i just glimpsed the spectator's card at the top of the deck yeah so once again we've got um we got the we got the um spectator's card fought from the top and um i show you the three cards three top cards which brings the spectator's card here to the top then um and i do this the justification is saying to, to make sure that the spectator's card is not on top of the deck and i don't know it as a magician and i say it's not also not somewhere at the at the back of the deck so it's really lost in the in the deck here and while i do so i just you know um i just i just glimpse the the bottom card here and this is ex exactly how it's ex explained in royal road to card magic so also we learn here the principle principle of the glimpse. So I glimpse the glimpse the spectator's card. I not know I know where the spectator's card is. I have it on 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 on, 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 uh, on top of the deck as I place it under the table. And uh, from a spectator's point of view, the card is completely lost in the deck. We just we, we, I, we just check this that it's not somewhere that it's not on the top of the deck. And I, the magician doesn't know which card it is. That's what the spectator knows. He knows the cards are shuffled. It's proven, proven that the card is not on top or not near the bottom of the deck. <coughs> and the, spectator, the, 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 the performer does not know what card it is. And then you put the card into the side pocket or into a, and into a pocket of spectator. Now, you see this book was... Uh, was uh, written at a time where there were gentlemen in the cafe house who definitely had the side pockets. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You need somebody who have these pockets there, right? So, and then um, you proceed. How was that? Right, and then you have a spectator name any card. You have the spectator now name any card, um, and then you will um, you will pull out um, wrong cards from the bottom of the deck, of course. 
and then at the, at the number of the spectator you will uh, draw out basically the um, selection of the spectator and then they end this chapter with this trick the feed is made up of the simplest possible elements, but properly presented, it never fails to create amusement and wonderment. So, um, when let's let's talk about something else here at this point. When you read about a trick or something, sometimes it it might it might not um, it might not sound that great. You might like you might be like. And what's so great about it? And that's then probably the case that you just didn't understand it or that you did not really imagine what is happening. And the great thing about books and a book like this, and you can trust these authors, these tricks are all amazing. And I believe they say it at some point in the book. They say, if you fail to um, with one of these tricks, it's probably not a trick. It's your performance. <laughs> You know, these tricks are really amazing. And if you perform this uh, this trick well, it's a powerful trick. Of course, you first you have to really imagine this, and you really have to understand. And this is true for uh, for learning any card trick. You really have to understand what is happening on the side of the spectator. What is the spectator seeing? What is the spectator experiencing? And then you got to see. You got to work it out for you. At at what point? Um, the dirty word happens why it happens at this specific point and um, where the spectator is in his mindset there and don't think too much as a magician because laymen don't know anything about magic and these tricks are designed in a manner and they are taught in a manner so that when you follow the the trick it is kind of self working it is kind of that's where you do it this glimpse works with this technique and this convincer with this technique works it's this design of the trick just give it a try and then present it well play out the magic and when you have a, when you have this trick at your hands and if you try this once and you have to stack in in the in the pocket of a of a spectator and you perform it well it's really entertaining and it's really worth it and you can do this with the overhand shuffle so how do you practice this of course like all the tricks first for yourself you go through this through the routine and i like to practice then at a certain point with um before i go out in the rear with with my with my friend mr fluffy puffy <laughs> i got mr fluffy puffy with me all the time and then um i, I show mr Fl fluffy puffy the trick um uh to 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 really um to have the, the 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 method not only the method but to really have the whole every step it's like um it's like climbing a wall you really have to memorize everything and you have to know blindly when what, what, what's the next step or the next grip and where you're going to and this this really happens on your side and none of this is visible and uh, um is none of this is visible from a spectator's point of view and the spectator only sees and only experiences what he or she is meant to to see and to experience and this is the key element here and this is what what we have to learn from the very very first moment next to the to the to to practicing the basic skills the basic hand the techniques of handling cards basic shuffling and false shuffling techniques then we have to to memorize the build up of the routine or of the trick first of all and this all of this we have to turn invisible and the, the trick design helps us because on the side of the spectator all these th things that are that we are working as a magician to create the illusion are invisible you know it's there's like kind of an invisible curtain that that just hides it from them you know, and that is the key. And if you understand, if you do understand, if you once realize that in tricks like these, they are built with this to, 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 to create this invisible curtain, you can trust this. It's it's like something you just you have to trust this. That it works. And then you have to and then you have to um to um and do you can only you can, can gain this trust only by by um performing it, by giving it a try, you know. Does it really work? Can I really fool the people with that? And then you re and then you will realize at a certain point why did you fail? And sometimes you fail not only 
blatantly or bluntly or just like uh, right in their faces because you messed the cards up like I just did a couple of times. Sometimes you fail because you do not trust the design of the trick. You do not, you are, you, 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 um, usually it's because when you do the dirty work, you are covered, but you are nervous about it and you try to hide the dirty work or you, you increase speed or you uh, interrupt your pattern. And then the, the audience says, why is he behaving so weirdly? Ah, maybe he's just setting something up that we are not supposed to know. And even if they don't know the um, the the secret, if they, even if they don't really know what is what is going what is going on, because most of the time in good trick designs, they don't know what's coming. The audience does not know what's coming. So how could they, you know, guess? They they couldn't guess. Oh, it's now shuffling three cards on top of the selection because then he's going to fake that uh that, that that there is not the selection on top of the card and actually brings it to, to, nobody thinks like that nobody nobody it's really hard to re to 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 get, get behind it step by step but they don't need to they only have to believe for themselves that they just know what's going on so that, here's the point flashing here that's the thing that that is the most important thing i i i'm going to share with you tonight guys and uh, just to, to get you to to get you out there performing even not perfect and even bumming you know and even nervous does matter it does matter because you got to walk through all of this anyways everyone had to everyone has to eventually the the key is that you just stay the fuck calm as possible and cool and smooth okay because flashing once in a while here and there you can get away with it sometimes people don't see it actually because a lot of things are going on and they are occupied with the things you're saying and so don't worry so much about flashing or failing don't worry so much worry more about being uh being interruptive being stressed out right at the moment where you should not be stressed at all and this is the nerves we got to train because if a spectator just kind of just gets the the glimpse of the thought that he knows what's going on even if he doesn't have any clue just the impression of I've seen something. You're done. Illusion ruined. And that's, by the way, why I really don't like these show concepts um, like uh, Fool Us, where the idea is that um, it's about fooling somebody. As soon as, from my perspective, from my experience as a close-up guy, as soon as it's about fooling somebody, being smarter, or the people getting behind the secret, you are on. You are not really performing magic. You, yeah, of course, you're still performing magic, but you're getting into this gambling routine thing. This is a really different style, which is really nice with cards, but as soon as you go there, the stocks are getting super high. You really need to be super a good really good card handler and as long as you as you are if, if, uh, as long as you're not you don't want to go into this area so you want to perform um you want to entertain your audience with with nice effects and with, with with simple tricks simple for them simple for yourself you know to gain the experience and you want to avoid under any circumstance this notion of ah i know how, the, how it's done you know and because that's ru that ruins the effect So Robert, uh, uh, Robert uh, Ball Magician is back in the house. What we got? We, who we got here? Um, well, let me see. Yeah. Robert, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. I've been, I've just lost myself here again, and I'm I'm just uh, um, uh, speaking things. I wish I would. Um, I would practice myself, you know. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Hey, Admirers, it's me again. Could you tell me some new decks you got uh, uh, on the table? Well, I just opened a new Tally Ho. That's I opened. 
Yes, timing is the key, says Flying V. Sometimes slower is better. Most of the time. Most of the time, especially um, when you're trying something new or when you're just getting started, you're way too fast. People are way too fast because they're stressed and they just want to get it um, behind them. And also, in a performance situation, time feels very differently. And it's like where performers say, oh my god, I'm in here for, an, I'm in here for, an, uh, for hours. It feels like hours. And it's like that has just been 45 seconds. Really? You know, this happens. So, and now, here, now, now it's getting crazy. Now, now it's getting crazy because, um, uh, because this trick, um, therapy plus, it's called. You kind of have to, um, you have to, um, you have to, um, I, I'm not going through this trick here, um, step by step. You, you have to read this yourself because uh, this was even, um, uh, hard for me, like, um, like getting behind it. I just, I just synopsisize, uh, uh synopsisize it. So what, what you're doing is, um, you are mind you're, you're reading the mind of a spectator and you're going to prove that you can do this and then you have a spect you have the spectator select uh, five cards out of a deck and then you will and and the spectator selects one of these cards without s telling anybody and d uh, up to the very end then you're going to put the cards at random positions in the deck and you give the cards a, f a, a crazy shuffle and depending on your skills you can really c shuffle then insane and uh, insanely and then you're going to at the end of the trick you want to ask the spectator to, to tell to share which card he se selected mentally and he's going, going to say um, uh, any card and then you're going to say I proved that I knew this was this card because I put the card right there at the position of its value so if it has been the nine of hearts it would have been in the ninth position of the deck right you follow so in this example here on this trick we have the let me let me try this let me try this uh, to set this up very slowly here so we have the nine um uh, so we have the cards uh, shuffled by a spectator spectator shuffles the cards and then and then the spectator deals down he says uh Hand him the pack of cards and have him shuffle it thoroughly. Then instruct him to deal a row of five spot cards of different suits and values. So he would deal now five spot cards of different suit and values. And I'm going here now with the example of the book. So to um, to, to follow the, the further instructions. So this, in this case, the, specta the spectator would deal down. The nine of hearts. Are you kidding me? Where's the nine of hearts in this deck? It's a brand new deck. Nine of hearts. The five of spades. The ace of diamonds. And the three of spades and basically this is uh what i'm doing right here and right now is a um example of how you work uh, start working out a trick because whenever every every trick and a uh, last practice session when we when we uh, worked with bobo's modern call magic was pretty much the same, you know. So you really work your way through. You first, you gotta get a, 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 a overview. Of, a, a, what's going on here? In seven of clubs. So I don't know this trick myself. No, it's the ace of diamonds. I'm such an ass. But I, I, be, I believe it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I just want to follow the trick here. Ace of diamonds. And the seven of clubs. Where's the seven of clubs? 
Seven of Clubs. Once again, Nine of Hearts, Five of Spades, Eight of Diamonds, Three of Spades, and the Seven of Clubs. Okay, let's 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 go with the book here. Take back the pack and invite the spectator to select mentally one of the five cards and to concentrate deeply on its suit and value. In order not to be suspected of de detecting the card by the direction of his gaze, turn your head away as he looks at them. When he announces that he has set his mind upon a card, turn the five cards face downwards as they lie, but in the meantime you have memorized the values. Taking, uh, taking no notice of the suits by saying to yourself 95 137. 95 137. Here's a little tip in between. In memorizing figures, always divide them into groups in this fashion. Never try to remember separate figures. A, a, a very, a very important tip here in between, you know, like memorizing tips. There's a, there's a whole, there's a whole universe of me memorizing techniques and, and, and mathematic principle techniques. And people who specialize on this thing, um, they can do incredible tasks with cards because they just, you know, they just take a look and they memorize and there are these, these whole memorized things. So basically also this trick, and I said it before here in the Royal Road to Card Magic, we are introduced in the very chapter. The novice focuses on the shuffling, practicing the shuffling and um, uses this technique already with the tricks he's introduced in the first chapter, but also these tricks introduce us already to different methods. And here we know we have a memorizing, a memorizing technique uh, combined with now a false shuffling technique to set up the trick in order to um, perform kind of a, um, 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 uh, of a um, mind reading, uh, trick a prediction kind of sideways you know but uh, Kabbalit says it's actually an easy trick yeah um, if you um, once got behind it you perform it you know it because now I'm uh, in the situation that I am ordering the cards from the um, highest value so um, let me read this here because I don't want to make this. I never performed this, so I'm just walking this through here. In order to understand the following process of shuffling the cards, we should explain that its object is to place the five cards secretly at position from the top of the pack corresponding with their values. Thus, at the conclusion, the Ace of Diamonds must be the top card, the Three of Spades the third card, the Five of Spades the fifth card, and so on. So we got 95, uh, 137. To do this, uh, assume a poker face. My poker face. I don't know. You got a po poker face, guys. How you? How does your poker face look like? Look steadily at the spectator and pick up the nine of hearts, the card of the highest value of the five. It's uh, it's face towards yourself, letting no one else get a glimpse of it. Look at it gravely, then lay it on the top of the pack in your left hand. So I got the cards here in my left hand. I take the nine of diamonds like this. I look at it with my poker face. I practice the magic and say, look, gotta do You selected this card, man. This card. Is it the card you decided to memorize? Because, you know, that's the thing. Now I'm playing this. Place the card on top of the deck. So, it needs to end up in the ninth position. Now, the next card now I take is the next that is up it's the seven i don't know why should i memorize the card i should i memorize the cards because i turn them i turn them over before so i got them memorized to turn them over okay doesn't matter i leave them open now so we got the nine we place them on deck of the cards now i've shuffled them right So, recalling that the next highest card is the Seven of Clubs, begin an overhand shuffle by running one card flush on top of the Nine of Hearts, injog the next card and shuffle off, undercut as the injog and throw on top. So, this is the thing. I now shuffle one card on top, so this would be the eighth card. I injog the seventh card, shuffle the rest off and I undercut. So now I've got eight 
Nine. Seven. My next card is the five. So I cut another card on. Six. In jog the five. Am I doing this right? I overthrow. I bring the five in here. The next is the three. Again, one card. And three on top. Right. And now I've got a three. Two, one. And now I would do this once again. One. Two. And the ace goes on top. And then I just give the whole thing one more forward shuffle. Like we started the whole jam session here. So, and now I have the spectator name the card he or she decided to memorize was it the nine was it the seven was it the five was it the three was it the one if it was the one i say look i know this because i placed okay i can call this out no matter what card you decided i placed it right there on the position of its value so then they say it's the ace you say there you go it's the your ace of diamonds they say it was the tree you go one two there's your card you say it was the it was the the five you say one two three four five you say it was the seven you say one two three four five six seven you say it was the nine you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. There you go. That's the trick. Now, Kabalet claims it's an easy trick. This is my back end, guys. This is what I'm seeing. Um, 14 folks watching right now. Uh, here I am. Kabalet claims it's actually an easy trick. Yes, it is. If we once understood the principle. Now, first of all, but it's still not so easy. First of all, you you have to, to you have to really um, master this uh, the, the overhand shuffle. So you need to be able to um, in jog at any point and um, securely um, undercut. That's what you have mastered a hundred percent. Then you must be enabled to um, to. whatever cards are on the table to set it up in the manner so when you haven't you know so you have to practice this a little bit to get a feel for the for the thing so that you're not creating the impression and this is the risk i'm seeing here that when you perform this you're going like okay it's a nine and in and the next is the five so i have uh i have a nine i have a, a uh, how many have I put there? I have eight, seven, six, and then I enjoy. <laughs> and then you shuffle like this, and the people, you know, it would then it looks something like this. It looks something like this. So here's your card. It's uh, uh, the the, the one, two, three, two. Yeah, and and then even if they don't know what you're doing, you're giving it away. So you you gotta be, you gotta have, you, you gotta go through some practice time. You gotta practice this. Eventually, this is something you can really practice with somebody who helps you. Who shuffles the cards who takes the part of the performer shuffle because you have this random situation that the spectator deals out cards so we got one we got the six of diamonds we got the jack of hearts we got the five of hearts and we got the the joker we take the joker out and we got the two of hearts right so i would say 16 joker 52 <laughs> Yeah, memorize. I, I got a, sh a shitty memorize. 16, 16 Joker 52. But the Joker is uh, which position is the Joker? Same <laughs> boobert 11. So it's uh, 16, 11, 52. Okay. That's the first thing. So if I turn this around now, if I do something else, now I'm already stressed. 52, 16, 11, 52 16 11 52 16 11 52 I'm, I'm i'm you know i would practice this okay yes jeremy friendly right says what i'm having problems so we're starting of course with the um um, and by the way, now when I'm doing this, because uh, I've never tried this, I, I, I avoid uh, I, I avoid the memory work. 
<laughs> because I'm a lazy fuck. So, uh, but I still remember, 6, 6, 16, 11, 52, it really helps. It's a really good tip. I've learned something here today. I'm, I'm building I'm building here uh, uh, consciousness and self-awareness about myself. So, I'm saying now, I've got these cards and saying now, okay, um, you gotta make your mind up. So, we are, we are here. And I'm saying, you as a spectator, you make your mind up now. You make your mind up. Where is it, okay? Uh, you got it? And then we got a... Uh, 11 I put this here and the next is a 6 okay so I got 11 and then I gotta, gotta go <laughs> 10 9 8 7 in jog ah right and throw over I don't even know I don't know if this worked um, next is the 6 I put the 6 in here I play this game and where, while I play this game is this your card and I think I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta go no I gotta do this like this Oh, is this, could this be your card? So I'm going here, six, and the next is the fifth, five. So I in-jog immediately. I in-jog, I shuffle, I throw over. Then comes the, uh, the five. Yeah, that's here. You see a lot of insecurities. I put it in, and the next is the two. So I go five, four, three, in-jog. That's how I roll. That's how I work my way. Then comes the two, and the next is the... The one, so it's an in jog. Again, here I'm shuffling, throwing over, <laughs> put the one there, and give it one final blow to a random position. One more time. Here we go. Bang. And now we go. What was your card? The name? It was the um, the Ace of Spades. Bang! It's on top of the card, top of the deck. It was the uh, the second card, Two of Hearts, or was it? It was one, Two of Hearts. There you go. And then it, it was. Uh, um, <laughs> 16, 11, 52. The next, uh, the, uh, uh, five is the five of what was it? Five. So one, two, three, four, five. Five parts, right? And then it's the six. There goes the six, right? And uh, then we got uh, uh, six, 16, 52, 11. Next is the 11. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jacks of clubs. That jack of clubs. There we go. Bang. Got a position. I understood the principle, but you see, I gotta memorize the cards. Gotta practice the memory to, to, to become consciousness. To, uh, to get uh, uh, consciousness about no, self consciousness. Um, uh, um, Selbstbewusstsein. Self confident. To get to become self confident. With, with, the, with the fuck, what, what, what the fuck I'm doing here, right? Self confident. Memorize the card and then. Um, Practicing to um, to set the cards up like this while shuff, 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 shuffling natural as possible, as natural, as smooth, as as calmly, as cool as possible. And I need to, and I would say I have this time, this moment where I show the card, this moment here where I have this interaction with the spectator. I'm saying, I'm 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 playing, I'm going cook 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 with my poker face. I look in with my poker face. Is this the card you selected? And I place it in the deck. And this is where I made up my mind, where where I realized, okay. I need to shuffle three cards upon there and then in jog. That's what I think when I look at you. So I'm what I'm playing is is this is your card? It's just a card maybe. And but what I'm actually thinking is three cards on top of there and then I in jog. And then I go okay. And then I do this like this bang and then and then I can do it. Now I've got a strategy. You you just saw me in real time. You just saw me in real time. Uh, coming up with a strategy to um, master the stressful situation in a performance situation to to uh, to, uh, to master this challenge or to 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 um, uh, uh, to to win in this situation to be enabled in this situation to set up the cards but creating the illusion of randomly sh um, losing five cards in the deck without knowing what card the spectator did actually select and here's the thing once again now this was all the magician's point of view this was my side so if I, if you now think if you don't if you forget about what the spectator actually experiences and sees you can easily lay the wrong weight at the wrong position so you got to really get back to 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 uh, visualize to understand what is happening in the mind of the spectator, um, which makes it at the end easier for yourself to to um, 
to balance the whole thing out, right? And from the spectator's point of view, this is amazing. I mean, imagine you are, what did I do? Wait a second, I just uh, put something here away. I'm sorry. So from the spectator's point of view, he or she, him or herself shuffles the cards and deals down the cards. The cards then, I'm just, I'm not, now just, that is not a, the spectator's point of view. The cards then get turned over, like casually. I'm, I'm just, just like that. No, no. What I do is, this is what I do. I say to the spectator, this, this is how, I, how it rolls. The spectator shuffled the cards. The spectator put the cards on the table. And I say to the spectator, now I want you to select one of these cards only with your mind. And so that I do not track you down with the way you look because I can read faces, you know, I'm a face reader also. <laughs> I would turn around. And while I set this up, I am memorizing my cards. <coughs> so guy, so um, how would I memorize this now? It doesn't matter, that would be my problem. I, had it, I have it now memorized. Um, and turn around. And I said to the spectator, I turn around, do you guys, do, do, do you, did you select a card in your mind? And the spectator says yes. Then just turn the cards around and the spectator could, turns the cards around themselves. Boom. Like that. And now I come as a spectator and I go and I take from a spectator's point of view randomly one card. Now I have the members and I looked at them. Put them in and shuffle the cards. Take another card. Put them in and shuffle the cards. Now I'm just doing this re real time. Not a card. Now playing this. Shuffle the cards. Real card and I shuffle the cards. One more time. Thing. So, and I shuffle the cards. Now I've got the cards all in the position. Just you have this. Now I've given them one more shuffle and then I cut them to the table. Bang, bang, bang. Just like that. That's how I would do it. And I say, now listen up. I read your mind. I know, I know what card you had, what you did choose. I put it under, in the position of its value. What card was it? And then the spectator says it was, I don't know what, the 10 of or whatever. And then I have him or her deal the cards down to the position and then it's the selection. It is a powerful trick. It is, a it is a powerful trick. I'm absolutely convinced that this is a powerful trick. Now that I think about it. I guess I should give it a try. What do you say, guys? What do you say? Should I give this a try once? So, Jeremy, um, uh, F Finlay is uh, absolutely right. You have to make it second nature, and you have to have all this, uh, all this, uh, uh, this whole flow. You have to really. Um it's got to be a second nature so that you can really go through it very easily. It's a very nice trick, though. It's, it's quite challenging right now if I say I would, you know, I would uh, have to put some practice in there to go out and perform this uh, smoothly. Out Marys, are you going to be going through other books like By Forces Unseen? It's hard to find. <coughs> I don't know. For, man, maybe one day. But uh, right now, we're, this is the Royal Road. We have uh, quite a journey ahead. Quite a journey ahead. And right now, we are doing this for one hour, 37, 38 minutes on a minute. Uh, we have now 14, uh, 10 people viewing currently. Uh, we had some uh, more, but I just went into this much deeper. Um, so uh, great, great, great. I, they did everything. They said, could even after stacking the deck have the spectator count the card down to a selection based on its value. In the end, the spectator will forget you shuffled them back in making them feel like they did everything. Not easy to pull off flowers though for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's right. The more, the less happens from a, the less happens from a spectator, uh, spe spectator's point of view with the cards, of course, the, the more magical th that is. Oh. Um, which which uh, where, where a trick deck decks come in handy, right, and very helpful. But if you if you are um, doing 
things that are way too impossible and um and the spectator gets suspicious about it they, they, they will assume it's in the cards and 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 if you are performing with a regular deck and people say i i i want to check the cards now um, and you can give it to them. That's great. That's I, I had it once, when, uh, or once or twice. Sometimes when people check the card and they're going like, hmm. yeah, these are normal cards. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? It's a very beautiful moment. But if you have a um, if you have a Spengali deck or a stripper deck, then with stripper deck you might could get away with it. But with a Spengali deck, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> ah, look at these cards. <laughs> Okay, kiddos. Jeremy Findlay, F F F F Findlay writes, I always get buzzed on a deck switch, so I always stick to impromptu. Yeah, yeah, deck switches, deck switches, deck switches. Very difficult. Oh, now, yeah, you gotta be bold, you know? Bold as... So... And then, and then we have the final trick here in this chapter, the Thought Stealer. This trick follows naturally after the preceding feat since it duplicates the effect of the other by an entirely different means. This course should be followed wherever possible when you are requested to repeat a trick. So this is really, really cool. Um, in the Royal Rook Rotor Card Magic here again, they give you um, a trick that naturally follows to this one because people say with mentalism things they really like to say do this again because it is an impossible feat it is just you put off something impossible you you would play you would you would know at which which position the card is you you, you would know which um, card the spectator choose and you would position the card right there in the deck this is this the people say i just want to do it again that that's you can expect them saying do it again if you pull it off and then the road road to card magic teaches you something never do the same trick twice or when to use a different method right and add something to it give it a little twist or a little turn to keep to, to stay fresh to keep it interested super super valuable here um absolutely there's so much valuable stuff right here in the first chapter like i mean we are 23 pages in and it's and you are if you perform these these tricks if you routine these tricks the topsy turvy cards the um uh the f four ace productions and then these tricks the telepathy uh, telepathy plus tartar shelter and the pinky does it you got it you got it you got a i don't know 15 20 minutes routine that will literally blow their minds and these are classic tricks and the great thing is laymen don't know anything about it they don't know these tricks so all you need to do is work chapter one get them pack them on get them onto your fan and go out there go out there and you're going to have a great a blast of a time a great time people are gonna give you if you perform these tricks well all you need is a business card and then you can <laughs> And they're gonna say, "Can you do this on? A, can you do this on a burst? Can do, would you come to our birthday party? What what, what, what do you charge?" <laughs> of course, they're gonna expect. They expect chapter two. Then can you do chapter two too? <laughs> you know, be careful. Oh, the magician didn't bring the rings. Didn't you bring the rings? The the, the rings. I'm a card magician. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> So, how was this one? Ah, yeah, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is a trick that only, uh, that only works um, in English. Uh, so, you, this is something, um, you, it can't be done um in, in 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 any other language just to know that but um since i don't know um, my channel is in english and 40 percent of my views come from the united states of america um yeah 
Um, this um, this works. Uh, this um, is again an example. Now I don't feel like going into this trick in detail. Um, it's an example again of uh, of another um, um, principle um, of spelling out the um, the suits and values of the cards, positioning them with false shuffling right in the right position and being enabled thus to create the effect of reading the spectator's mind. Very, very nice uh, trick. And also um, you are, um, when you really study this, when you really learn this, getting a basic principle in your repertoire, which uh, you can um, uh, um, use in a many other scenarios. Um, and have a great time with. This is absolutely cool. But I'm exhausted now. And I hope you don't mind. I read the, the whole chapter today. I've walked through it. I um, did give you as much insight as I can. Now is the time, just one more time to give me and to ask me questions on this, on the, on this uh, um, performance aspect of the tricks if you want or on the um, sleight of hand respectively on the card handling aspect I'm, I'm gladly answering all of your questions here right now before I close the chapter the road road to card magic for today and then st start practicing a little bit I will I want uh, you know have a little practice time practice a little table riffle and a, a little bit of um, dealing here um, and then uh, while doing so, uh, letting all the all the inf insights and all the, the, the information sink in, you know, until we get back there. Just a little teaser here. Um, next Tuesday. Wait, it's got to be next Tuesday. It's got to be next Tuesday. Um, yeah, next Tuesday. Um, we're going into the... Um, into the second, straight into the second chapter um, 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 what is it here, where I got it uh, the riffle shuffle okay, that, uh, so we got here um, just to give you a little teaser here we got the riffle shuffle control, retaining a card at the top, retaining a card at the bottom which is really um, absolutely not, not a big deal riffle shuffle in air and then tricks with the riffle shuffle and instinct for cards, mirror of the mind and ultra card divination this is not so full throttle um, like today um, but let's see that's then, and then we go to flourishes we go to the glide, we go to the glimpse. We already today had a glimpse in there. There's many glimpses and what we learned today already about the glimpse is that there are different use case scenarios in the glimpse and that if you give the, the moves you do or the actions you perform um, a certain justification, a satisfying set, 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 uh, justification from the for the spectator, you're getting away with the most stupidest of things. This is crazy, right? So, then keycard principle, uh, the palm, the palm, the backslip, then overhand shuffle episode two, false shuffles and cuts, um, the double lift and turnover, Ooh, the pass, miscellaneous flourishes, the reverse, a whole chapter on reverses and I'm really excited about because I skipped this one, I just don't, I just know the one from the Topsy Turvy cards, I didn't, I never really used another reverse. Uh, Hindu shuffle and other controls, I'm super curious about why the Hindu shuffle is so late in the, uh, 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 here at the end of the book. Then the classic force, let's talk again about forcing techniques, then top and bottom changes, then we're talking about arrangements, then we're talking about routines and then the whole chapter about platform tricks. So. Bang! That's just a lot of material. I don't know. We're going to be. Pro it's going to be probably the end of the year, and this is um, pretty much um, what's going down on my channel. I try to um, uh, to do more tutorials and performances, but I have a, my 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 schedule this year is out of control. A lot of things came th that I didn't expect. Also, I'm, I must say honestly, I'm really frustrated on YouTube right now because the algorithm is so, I might, it's like getting buried uh, here as a smaller content creator who does ed educational 
um, stuff uh, with this um, um, tutorial paradox that if you produce um, great good tutorials that make people that answer questions and that make people stop watching YouTube because they found what they were looking for and then they start practicing a video like this it's it's a hard effort it takes time and um and a lot of work to produce them and they basically basically get buried by the algorithm because the algorithm wants people to stay on the platform to keep watching so so a good tutorial it's there's not it's, it's, it's basically it's, it's basically um pointless to make a good tutorial on youtube because it will not show um and i i didn't find a strategy to deal with this right now i will i keep doing my things but i to quite honestly i'm really i'm really very a very low, low motivation here however i'm on patreon i will give you guys on this topic an in-depth um very soon um since there's five guys of you supporting me via patreon which is amazing which is a blast thanks for the tobacco um since uh, which i don't need anymore since i'm not smoking but um um a very very appreciated it's a huge, huge motivation and every really every penny and every kind of support counts right now there's also a very um famous video up and running right now by vera tizium i believe um this channel is called who had a video that went viral and then the guy comes out with a video and says uh how to go viral and i was kind of interested in it and then he ex he he says this is just clickbait and i will do more clickbait in the future and i'll tell you why and then he gives a very detailed very super explanation on what's going on on youtube which helped me a lot because i thought i, I was crazy i thought you know um uh, i was really doubting my myself and what I was doing but watching this video really um, uh, got me off the cliff because uh, now I know it, it's not my problem it's 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 not my fault I'm, I'm not the only one with this problem and actually right now a lot of channels are, are suffering hardcore bad having a bad time on YouTube at the same time we have a uh, we have a clickbait competition out there and we have uh, the, the the shadiest of garbage and trash and and trend uh, and and gossip trending and floating everybody's feeds it's uh, it's again it's 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 just another it's just another hard year on the platform um just having said this great one session one chapter that's that's the idea one session one chapter of the royal road to card magic uh Yeah, you can. Um, uh, um, I have come up with a, a Jeremy now Findlay upload it on YouTube as a, a private link or something and then just um, um, invite me for this. You know, you can upload videos and unlist them or make them private. And uh, I believe when they're private, only the people can see them that you invite or when you make them, when you unlist them, everybody can basically see them, but they need to know that it's out there. So you just unlist it and send me the link. Uh, and then I watch, then I take a look at it. Um, um, I love the dis discussions on your streams. Appreciate your time to the crowd. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time joining me here. Um, having a great day. I've got to go. My alarm clock rings tomorrow at 5. Thanks for the live stream. I hope I'm not responding too late. Flying Wee, you're welcome. See you next time. Okay, so a brand new, um, brand new um, Teliao gets back in the box. And then I'm taking my bees to get into practice here 11 11 of you guys watching you right now getting into practicing here just a little bit a little bit of practice here at the end of of the day for me after we've been through the chapter one uh, the of the Royal Road to Card Magic, the overhand a shuffle, right? I hope the quality of the stream was crisp, sound was good, um, background music not too loud, my voice um, loud enough. Yeah, Jeremy. Um, just send me. Just send me uh, uh, the the link.
I'm also really missing private messages on uh, YouTube. They, they cut them loose. No more private messages on YouTube. And the alternative they gave this chat thing. I mean, are you guys using this? I don't know. I don't use it. I don't know how it works. I tried to commu communicate with, with people with it. It doesn't work. Nobody's responding. It is a it is a G plus disaster. It is. Uh, it's just uh, just so bad. So, here we are again, back to my thing, back to what I am uh, practicing for a long time now. T trying to, to get behind the secret of professional, of, of the expert table work. As a stand-up guy, having a hard time not being, actually being on the table that it intensively only here doing these live streams with you guys. So... You can kind of, you know, uh, see a real-time, a real-time development if you follow um, all, if you follow the live streams. Yeah, which is which is uh, which is funny. I've got them also all the live streams in the info cards. In the info cards there up there, you will find all the live streams in one playlist from the very last to the very first which was which was super exciting but also really really shitty quality the sound quality was so bad although i actually bought an extra mic which turned out to be super shitty 60 bucks for the trash Yeah, and then we got this, um, I mean, uh, in show business, makeup is uh, is uh, relevant up to a certain point in television. <laughs> but what is going on in the freaking beauty community? I mean, this is insane. What a garbage. What a waste of time. I'm telling you. It is so bad now on YouTube. If I had children, I would. It, it's so bad in the internet, actually. I, if I had children, I would. Uh, they, I would. They would not be allowed to be good to go online. Absolutely not. But I'm glad you guys uh, enjoyed the, the first chapter here of the Royal Road to Card Magic. I feel like that was a productive time so far. So let me give you a closer look on what I'm doing here. All right. Now this is too close, I feel like. Where am I going? Now I'm a little too big here. I can why can't I change this? This is weird. Okay, I can't change it. Doesn't matter. You know, for me, it's important um, here, especially with what I'm doing on this channel, like to keep track, to 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 uh, to stay focused 
on what's really actually important and for me um, because I was like kind of you know I'm so stressed with so many things in my life right now I was like uh, I was like okay yeah, you got to focus on, on, on really the essential so where's the path where what is really what is really important what's the roots of what you're doing there and of and it obviously it was um it was Royal to card magic which which always guided me on my uh, on my um, in my learning process so so I said that it would be a great idea and I got a good feedback for you guys so so I was I was saying you know what let's just do this Yeah, this is um, this is um, uh, here. I have th I have a little camera angle, so the steps will go away when I w w would um um go a little bit in this angle. It is it is not necessarily needed to hide the steps of the of the shuffle because this is embedded in a whole sequence. Usually, this is this is not a magician's fooler. This is um. This, but it's for layman it it always does the job but I'm practicing this very intensely here because um, I'm this is something I just don't I just have a real hard time to get under control especially in the speed I'm performing it here I'm 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 not there hundred percent so that's why I whenever I'm sitting at a table I give this a shot right I mean, it's the same thing w like with the overhand shuffle on um, on a Royal Road to Card Magic, the first chapter. Now, um, the it's not so much about uh, about flashing uh, once uh, in a while here and there. Is the overall performance um, temperature right? You know what I mean. So for everybody who's tuning in now later, we've been done, we've been through with the Royal Road to God magic here. So not that you're thinking that this is a clickbait or something. <laughs> I need to I need to um, to get also I don't know how, how is this called there's this uh, you can connect OBS with um, Streamlabs I believe that's it so I can give you guys so that you can see later how many people are viewing currently and um, if somebody subscribes or does a super chat or whatever you know to <laughs> To get a little bit more of action, and also I want to add a clock so that you can see how long, how long am I streaming actually, and what time it is where I'm streaming. So, because sometimes when you um, go into a live stream and you think, "What is wrong with these people? They're like super lame," and and then it, you realize, "Oh my God, they are streaming already for three hours." And of course, <laughs> you're not you're not fresh. After three hours of talking and 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 interacting with people, Thank you. 
Shuffling like a pro. Dealing those cards into the abyss. Yes, that's intended for what I'm planning to do with it right now. But you mean you like this one, right? To give it a long distance. That looks better. Thanks for the tip. I'm getting somewhere, <laughs> but it's not so much, you know. This is this the, the, the fine tuning. It's it's unbelievable how exhausting this is in the in the right thumb, um, in the right thumb, and uh, the the right positioning of the of the cards. It's really exhausting. But thank you very much. Thank you very much for the for the tip. So everybody, six people watching right now. This is now practice, practice time. If you want to make this quality, quality time, get a deck of cards out and practice.
Right, because you 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 are simulating the laying down of the cards, right? So you want to have these hand the fingers go like this, but the cards not snapping into the right position when I do this. So I gotta adjust a little bit. Yeah, well, so we are, so we are even because you just helped me uh, very much with with the with the laser deal here, just as, just as the distance and going down. But it it is now for now it is my my um, wrist is now my my thumb. It is almost impossible to p perform this easily. Unbelievable how this is how 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 this is uh, exhausting for this muscle area here, this whole muscle area. It's absolutely insane. Time to use other muscles. Uh, this is not so invisible. This is uh, still bodybuilding here. Don't freak out about this. I'm, uh, I'm just having here a really hard time to get the, my to get my fingers under control. This will take some really, really conscious fine-tuning to get this going ever I mean, we are here on YouTube. I mean, this is a, we had, had a situation um, with, with all the many hours of video that's going to get uploaded, that, that is uploaded every minute. Um, this is such a cozy community here on my channel. And um, and that's why I, I absolutely, I'm, I'm absolutely free to, to, um, to go completely bananas and, and um, oh, Openly practice here and and uh, jam on jazz to 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 the chapters of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Um, this is all work in progress, and and each one teach one. You know, we're helping each other, and we're just you know keeping the motivation alive. Alive, and I know, for example, I just started this practice jam sessions here on YouTube because I know um, practice time is absolutely valuable, and uh, um, to 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 get into um, steady. Um, into into schedule into a, a steady schedule of practice time and making this practice time valuable and also using this practice time well this is not so this is not an easy task itself um and so i thought you know what just i just give it a try i just uh, start practicing and streaming and um sharing some of the things i think are right and um uh, and let's see where this goes you know that that that's basically the the idea and um yeah it, it works um fine for for some folks and myself um so far yeah that's uh, that's true um uh, like Werner says, they always said, um, Jeremy Findlay just writes in the comments, is making the false move look like a natural move. Um, um, yes, and Aaron Fisher says uh, pretty much the same thing. Also very often says in, in card magic, we are practicing to make something very unnatural look naturally. And this is the hardest part. And this is why it takes so much time. And then there's 
there are these different layers and this you have micro muscles moved you have um you have micro timing and macro timing and you have to synchronize all of this then you have to kind of memorize a pattern you have to maybe memorize cards and at the same time you have to you have to have this m uh, movements go down completely fluently so it is it's all not so easy um otherwise um, i guess more people would do it right <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any music. Where is the music? So. Okay. I want you. I want everybody to see this here because Jeremy Fintlay is completely active in the in the chat. Thank you so much, man, for your support and for this nice comment you're writing. So glad I found your page. Watch your practice and working fine details helps me so much more. The advice and ch ch changing little things to make a slide workable is invaluable. Yes, thank you so much for this nice uh, comment. This is. Um, this is um, how I roll, and this is—I I mean, it. Um, I'm—I started with magic pretty late in my life. I'm, I'm uh, in my early 40s. I started in my early 30s, so um, it's uh, about, th yeah, maybe th uh, 13 years now or something. Um, and you know, as Di Vernon always said, in, uh, um, or his uh, his line was, um, as an old a magician also, I started imagining magic when I was six years old. Uh, so obviously, I wasted six years of my life, which is a really funny funny line for a for a seven year old man or even sixty year old man. <laughs> and um, sometimes it feels like this, but on the other hand. Um, um, magic is an art from where so many elements blend together, so um, so the things I did before come really um, uh, come um, uh, in handy. Uh, I, I was a musician, a, a performing artist, uh, a, a writer, a kind of comic, something like this, and um, all these elements that blend together in magic. So, um, so uh, this really, uh, this really, um, you know, um, uh, helps me a lot. But I, but really, I must say, um, cards for me are something uh, really magical. Um, it's kind of a meditation also. It really gets me um, focused and uh, calms me down. Um, it's just it's just really nice. So um, yeah, but I'm glad you like this and this channel helps you and um, um, inspires you also. My work, what I'm doing here, and this interaction, I enjoy it really much. Super cool, man. So back to the card table here. Just the cards for a little bit for an outro. And the other day, which was funny for everybody, for the seven folks that are viewing uh, but they're not commenting, probably they're all um, asleep already. Um, last live stream, at least at the beginning, Miss Make A22 did, did uh, tune in, which was which was really insane. <laughs> but he just tuned in to promote that he was uploading a video again. <laughs> So who's with me guys? Come on. Nine folks watching. Hit the comments. Just give your hands a little break. Let me know who's still with me. That would be rocking awesome. I am streaming now for two hours and 18 minutes. We already, and I, I just saw what I did here. I don't like it. I have to do it like this. I have to do it like this. This is what I got to practice now. Because this looks super stupid. This looks like I'm doing something. And I need to figure this out. I got to do it like this. This is how it looks like. Got to look like. Okay. Nice fine detail here. I found out. Right? Looks so much better. But is... Uh, somehow a little bit more difficult and then bang bang and bang bang and then I'd like to do this one this one little fine routine shuffling routine ah <laughs> there you go 
I'm doing this again. Also, this is something when you practice something like this. This, you know, here I'm taking it from here because I, I just I conditioned myself to do so for some stupid reason. And this looks unnatural. Why? Look at this. The whole it, it, it is one. It needs to be synchronized. I'm doing it like this always, so I gotta take it like this. But if you once practice this and practice this and you conditioned yourself to do it, so it's so much harder to get rid of the shitty habit. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful with um, conditioning yourself with bad habits. Six folks watching right now. Can you see this here, guys? When you look at this analytics stuff here, this was the peak here, there. We had, I don't know, 18, 19 people watching. And then it just uh, drops down. And this is me, what I did just a few moments ago. And we're doing this here for two hours and 21 minutes with a good stream quality health, which is nice. Nice, nice, nice. Get some nice background music, turn this up a little bit. What's going on here? That's where we go. Right there. Some nice piano music, bringing it here smoothly to an end. Just one more thing I gotta practice here a little bit. And then it's time, it's time for bad time to something. Because in Berlin, in Germany, Berlin, we are about to hit 23 hours of the day. Hour 23 of the day. That's what we're gonna do. The day is almost done. Just one more hour. What are I gonna do? Shuffle some cards. The world is crazy, everybody is crazy. But we are shuffling cards here on our various magic. Shuffling cards, dealing cards, practicing our thing. And I don't like this arrogant magic, you know? I don't like everything that's showing off, you know? I like the humble style. I like this. I like when you, when you, when you, when you hit them hardest at, at an unexpected hour or moment. Just gentle and kind, but still powerful, you know. thing that's as loud that that is screaming in your face all this hysteria it's not lasting and it's meaningless that's the worst of it it's loud and hysterical and meaningless that's a lot of tears and pain and agony and stress uh, for no reason there's it's no one no one gains anything that's pointless And I just don't want to take any more part in it. Not more than I did, you know. I did enough. Shared enough of this hustle. I'm done with it. So guys, 
What do you say? What's going on? Let's practice some some standard moves. Ah! <laughs> but we're doing this with the tally hook. Chaining cards. Get a tally hoe out. Brand new deck. Get rid of those cards. Let's give it a try. Just like that. One card. Oh, the white joker. Colorless joker. Look at the colorless joker of the tally hoe. Just like that. Bang. Turns into the Queen of Diamonds. That's a nice move, right? One more time. Ace of Diamonds. Bang. Bang. Turns into Four of Diamonds. Ace of Spades. I'm such an idiot. I guess I need to shuffle those cards a little bit because um, it's pointless otherwise. Classic move. It's going to be used. Use it very often. People love it very much. Absolutely cool. Classic Erdness color change. Need to loosen my thumb. My thumb is too stressed. Just loosen my thumb here a little bit. Just a little bit. And there you go. Bang. Yeah, you know, um, for a performance situation, a simple um, uh, get ready with a with a um, pinky break. I mean, we go in, we get we get into double lifts, and then you you pu pull it off like this. If you want to improve your double lift, I have a whole tutorial series on my channel on the double lift, um, starting with a um, with a beginner version, which is this one, um, which really also works very well. Look something like this. Um, and then a more sophisticated version where you catch the pinky break with th with this one and then you turn the cards in this manner yeah something like this looks also very natural and of course the strike um, which is with a brand new deck a little dangerous but uh, look I would perform it like this and uh, then uh, there is this little variation here. This is very nice too, which you can also add this little um, convincer to it, right? And you turn the card around like this. The double lifts of my of my liking. Of course, the pushover is um, is the one everybody challenges, and basically, you can only learn this when you learn um, when you learn uh, dealing seconds with strike pushovers. But um, who's crazy enough to spend this amount of time in there? This is. Uh, this is still work in progress and it's still not safe and now I'm doing this with this one um, and this can still be this this needs to be really improved it's our yeah now here now it's I would do I gotta do it like this it's like, like something like this um, it fools the eye the natural eye and camera not now not so much now this is I'm, 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 I'm streaming with 30 frames per second <laughs> with 60 frames per second this is a different deal but I'm really slow, but it's already... I wanted to, you know, when I saw Turner doing it, I was like, yeah, man, I want to do it. It's there in the, in, at, at the expert card, at the card table. Let's get, let's do this. And then you're going, but one of the few people who can do a pushover double lift, like a real, like Die Werner. <laughs> For no reason, because everything else works as fine, just as fine with layman, you know? There is this um, absolutely um, 
absolutely fantastic trick in expert card technique. I don't know if you know this. Oh, no, this is Bobo's toy match. Expert, uh, it's, all, it's also Hogart. Oh expert ca card technique, I believe it's this. And there is, um, there is this absolutely fantastic trick wh which, uh, where you need to have a, a, a double, a double, uh, 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 where you need to second deal cards, and it also there is it's I believe it's a Miller control where you have the um, any card um, and um, you place it right there in the center of the pack, bang, and that is what's happening, and then the card comes jumping to the top. I believe Miller, is, it's called a Miller control, and this control has been made popular by some of these illusionist guys i don't know what's his name in, in ninja the series is called ninja um weapons for illusions or something some of this one of these dvds that take very a very old material and they present it as, as as if it was the latest and newest gig um anyways and they 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 they, they featured this um control there and when i saw it i was like man where do i know it and I believe this guy, and uh, the, the, but it's a, it's an outstanding performer. Don't get me wrong. I don't know what's name right now from this illusionist guy from Ninja DVD. Uh, and he says himself he he, he can't um, he don't know, he doesn't know the, the reference. And so I was like, I know. I, where was this? Where where do, did I know it? Where did I know it? And then I I, I I actually looked it up. I searched for it. It took me super long, and then I found it. But, but in the expert cut technique. And then I remembered, ah yes, it's this thing I wanted to perform, at the, and because of that, I, I I decided to practice the or to learn the the second deal. Um. <clears throat> yeah, now you know the story. Do you know this uh, this uh, card? Um, ah shit. Production card control. It's very nice. Also, angle sensitivity. Oh man, with a new deck, this is crazy. Oh, now I'm now I realize how tired I am. Yeah. Oh no. Hashtag pink pinky consciousness. Some desperate top shots here. Everything's out of control. I mean that's the key, you know what you said. I, uh, the, uh, I to get a constantly uh, constant push, uh, uh, push over to have to really control and the the, the, the micro the micro um, uh, m m m muscles and the micro timing that's happening here. So it's really insane. It is just the right amount of pressure, which is so super super light. And this is one of these techniques before you just like the laser D before you just get it going. I mean just before you get re before you really start practicing. You spend so so long. It isn't. It, it it's really insane. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's a weird time, you know. We are all we have this social media, and everybody is sitting um, alone in in their rooms all the time uh, and, and shouting into the abyss. <laughs> And also, you can get uh, get really um, um, frustrated about um, about watching um, stuff online because um, I mean, you you are, uh, only see the high end product all the time, and this can be really intimidating. And you can you you can get the idea that you're a complete loser because everybody's so cool and so super and so awesome. But of course, this is all. This is only the products, it's only the end scale, you know, and nobody, what I'm doing here, nobody really shows this, uh, shows the work behind it, you know, the back end. You know, it takes it takes some some of the magic away. And this is also this moment here. This was one of these moments when you practice long enough. And then there comes a time where, where, where for, uh, for a certain amount of time, every term, everything uh, falls, falls into place. And then it's just smooth and it's just that's how it's supposed to be. And then you have it for 30 seconds. Next time it comes, make it 45 seconds. Next time it comes, make it a minute. Next time it comes, make it one and a half and so on and so on and so, and so on and so on. Until it becomes, what, what do you say in English, second nature. And you can... You can um, get started here for for the here now. See, I just said it, and then it's just garbage again. Trying to remember what made the what was the difference? Why would this? Uh, and if I could do it, if I could do it just a couple of moments ago, just seconds ago, I, I should be able to repeat it right now, right? Ah, here we go. Like this. I can't tell you with the seconds how long it took me to 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 um it was it's always hard at the beginning and then at a certain point you get into it and then you but that you need to for, for to to uh, to, uh, to perform uh, the decent seconds you need to to be there from the very start super <laughs> so the first first two th three cards are the, are the most uh uh important get into the groove from the very beginning it's like it's this it's sand, the card of second dealing. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm writing this book one day. Yeah, this is the same for me. Yeah, this is the same for me. I really, I'm just in love with this micro uh, micro motions, you know, with this sleight of hand. That's just, just it's uh, the challenge is just great. But I don't know, man. I, when I was uh, when I was younger, it was easier for me to. Uh, it was uh, today. It's easier for me to focus and to concentrate. It was uh, very difficult for me as a young as a young folk uh, to 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 concentrate and 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 to stay on track. I could have been a so much uh, uh, m uh, more virtuous uh, musician than I was. But I, man, I I I was so lazy practicing, and I was so. Uh, so not focused. And for the last half hour, something really weird is happening. It's like uh, nine, six, nine, six, nine, six, nine, six, nine, six, six people watching, nine people watching, six people watching, nine people watching. <laughs> Let me show you, this looks like this, it's crazy, where is it? Here, look. Look, it looks like this, here. Like this. Look. Nine people, six people, nine people, six people, nine. <laughs> 
So stupid. But we got a hundred playbacks. Currently nine people watching. We're doing this now for two hours and 40 minutes. I would say um, we're doing this for two hours and 40, 40 minutes today. That's it. I'm, I'm saying we're good. I'm good. With 100 playbacks, I'm satisfied. I had a great night with you guys. I don't know who's watching right now. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. This was another live card magic practice session here on Marius every Tuesday about 8 starting at 8 p.m. GMT plus 2 Berlin Standard Time Berlin Standard Time <laughs> Berlin Summer Time and um, now I got here um, Jeremiah Findlay uh, responding to something I was just talking about I gotta get, get it back to this we saying me as well was a drummer at 12 years old and started with cards around the same time but one and off till my later years uh, did I put more direction into it 40 years old now and far behind put practice yeah man it's a lot more uh, it's all a lot more dedicated thanks for the stream is invaluable to us awesome really really great yeah I mean so you um, you're also my age about my age so then you know it you know how it goes in in life it, it takes you it takes you in many different directions um, Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, at the end of the of the day, no matter how many years uh, uh, go by, you you're still a little kid, right? <laughs> and um, trying to mess, make make the best out of it. And I think this is kind of beautiful, you know, and also kind of frustrating at the same time, you know, <laughs> growing an old fuck, but still, you know, having all these dreams going on and. Um, I believe we just have uh, too, too little time as, as human beings. So for me, time becomes more and more a really precious resource. And I, and I hate it wasted with, um, with um, stupid, meaningless things and with um, um, fighting and hatred and, I don't know, hysteria and, also, and, and all, this, all this stuff, you know. Uh, but, but, but what can you do? Uh, not everybody is as, as wise as us, right? <laughs> And everybody is, I don't know, on, uh, everybody is on, that, uh, is, uh, on, uh, is on the road, you know, trying to achieve something. Some are better than others, some don't know what's going on, some know even less, you know. You never know what's, what's coming around the corner and everybody's hoping for the best. <laughs> and also we live in a world that, that makes a lot of promises, you know, and when I remember myself being a, a teenager, um, I was full, full of ideals and uh, also I was completely de delusional about uh, what I uh, what I was uh, what I was meant to achieve in this in this in this uh, in this world you know until you re realize that you're one of eight, um, eight, uh, eight billions you know and <laughs> you gotta work hard for uh, for anything good um, and nobody's waiting for you right and uh, and then we're living in a capitalist society that that's based on you know uh, keeping people frustrated so that they compensate with cons con uh, uh, consumption and at, at the same time promising all everything you know and uh, so so this is uh, kind of a little bit of history repeating if I watch uh, now uh, all the all the youngsters on YouTube and on the internet um, and they go crazy and have all these um, opportunities but at the same time they are um, it, growing up in a highly competitive and extremely changing environment and also in a very instable environment. I mean, take a look at YouTube. Uh, uh, um, how are you going to be an expert with an algorithm that's changing basically every, every uh, f a few minutes? And um, how, do you, um, how do you build something sustainable in a world that is uh, shifting and changing so rapidly and so fast? You know, um, so f for me, uh, it's just, you know, keeping a low profile, staying calm <laughs> and uh, trying, to, trying to be a decent, uh, decent dude. Um, cherishing joyful, joyful things, hopeful things, you know. So I'm preaching again. That's usually what I'm doing at the end of a live stream. Anyways, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, it was a great session, a great night. We are now doing this for 22 hours and 44 minutes. So I'm going out here at uh, 2 hours 45 minutes, which is in 30 seconds. 
My name is Ot Marius, guys, and that's what I do. Thank you so much for tonight. Next Tuesday, we're going into the second chapter of the Royal Road to Card Magic, right into, I don't know, into the Riffle Shuffle and three beautiful card tricks, which I can't remember what they are right now. Um, be sure, until then, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Take care now. And have a great day or night or whatever is uh, coming around the corner for you. Thumbs up. Odd Mario's, Odd Mario's magic. magic. Like and subscribe.